بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم Hi dear first year medical student This is the last lecture on the first term lectures And we will discuss today the blood bond pathogen Which means the disease is caused by blood transmission What are the blood bond pathogens? What do you know? Which pathogen is transmitted through the blood? There are three well-known blood bond pathogens. They are first the human immune deficiency virus, HIV virus, which is the responsible for AIDS, and hepatitis B virus, hepatitis C virus. These are the three main blood bond pathogens. How can they enter the body? They can enter the body through the direct contact with either there is a broken skin by abrasion, any laceration, cutting wound in the skin for a reason or another there is a broken skin or through the mucous membrane mucous membrane of the eyes of the nose or the mouth or lastly through contact with a contaminated sharps which means a sharp object knife or needle etc so these are the main route of entry of this pathogen to the blood to of blood sorry to the body categories with a high exposure to blood bone pathogen whom are exposed more than others to these to these pathogens transmitted from the blood first of all the healthcare workers means medical and paramedical staffs doctors nurses any workers in hospitals and daycare centers Okay, so they are often the first group. Second, employees cleaning a restroom. Those, the workers in the restroom, in the bathroom. Maybe in hospitals, in schools, in universities. And they deal with urine, with feces and sanitary napkins during menstruation. It is contaminated with the blood. Third, cleaning up after an accident in workplace blood vomit or other body fluid like in this one he got wound during his work and maybe there is vomiting or blood this goes all over and those who work to clean this area they are even more than others exposed to the pathogen carried by blood repairing equipment contaminated with body fluid any body fluid contaminated area like in toilet or after industrial injury they are also liable to have infection with a pathogen caused through the blood more than others so mode of transmission bloodborne pathogens such as as we said hepatitis b virus hepatitis c virus and hiv these are transmitted through contact with infected human blood or maybe through other infectious bodily fluid not only the blood maybe other body fluid might cause this infection like semen semen and the, the viscid whitish fluid from the male this is a male discharge and vaginal secretion fluid from the female cervix female discharge CSF fluid which is colorless liquid that surrounds the brain and the spinal cord Synovial fluid that's in the joint. There is a fluid in the joint to lubricate the cushion of the joint to facilitate movement. And the pleural fluid that's a fluid between the pleural membrane of the lung, the inner chest, between the lung and the chest wall. We call the pleural fluid. Peritoneal fluid that's a fluid in the gastrointestinal organ. Or amniotic fluid surrounding the fetus. Fluid surrounding the fetus inside the abdomen of the mother and saliva in the mouth this is common in dental procedures contaminated and any body fluid that is visibly contaminated with the blood any fluid in the body contaminated and lastly accidental puncture from contaminated needles and other sharp result in transmission of blood bone pathogen like in contaminated syringe or knife and so on so 
Hepatitis B virus and C virus and HIV are most commonly transmitted through either sexual contact through intercourse or sharing of hypodermic needle like this needle for diabetic patient for example and from mother to their babies like this through intrauterine life to transmit through the umbilical cord to the peritoneal cavity and then to the baby or accidental puncture from contaminated needle or broken glass or any sharp object that can cause this cutting wound or because of contact between the broken or damaged skin and infected body fluid any damaged skin broken lacerated uh, this will called infected body wound and contact between the mucous membrane and the infected body fluid so in the mouth or in the eye or in the nose there is infection because of contact or contact because of laceration in this mucous membrane and infected body fluid in most work or laboratory situation transmission is most likely to occur because of accidental puncture from contaminated needles so in the laboratory setting it is more common through contaminated needles broken glass or sharp object which is very common so infected blood can enter the body system through the open sores this is one of the open sores it was inside the mouth and this is outside the mouth we call it open sore cutting wound or abrasion laceration يعني خدوش أو جروح acne like this one this is acne and any sort of damage or broken skin such as in burn and sunburn and blister this is the blister so these are the root of entry of any infecting blood bond disease or maybe through the mucous membrane as we said through the eyes or the nose, nose sorry or the mouth as a splash of contaminated blood to your eye or nose or mouth could result in transmission splash of blood to the eye directly or to the mouth or to the nose and so on it will cause transmission of the blood bone pathogen so safety device injection equipment to decrease risk of this accidental uh, pathogen to enter the body safety devices are applied including injection equipment used for intramuscular and intracutaneous and subcutaneous sorry, injection and include disposable syringe which is syringe and the needle the needle with needle guard this is a needle guard to protect from any accidental trauma for achievement attachment to the syringe the and needleless jet injection system this is the jet injection system so medication vial adapter this is the vial and this is medication adapter it is directly communicate with the syringe to decrease the risk of accidental trauma and this is for IV and intravenous insertion equipment they can use this a venous viewer viewer and they can see the vein more easily and they assess this needle or that one with a butterfly needle so they can use it easily with a vein viewer or blood collecting equipment they use the blood and collect the blood included are the blood collection needle and there is a reusable and disposable needle holder housing and vacuum blood collection tube this is a vacuum this is a vacuum collection tube here and they use it here this is much easier and less trauma causing less trauma to the patient and decrease the risk of a blood bone pathogen to transmit to from person to other thank you thank you very much